Okay, this is um, one of our Bell 206 systems sitting up on, uh, on a test bed, uh, just testing it prior to shipping it out to our customer. You will see up on here we actually have our, the glare shield, still with a protective coating on, just sitting on there at the moment, and it is just sitting all there, on, the, on sitting on top of the monitor at the moment. The gauges and things are all um, sitting in pretty much the right spot, um, and we, we supply a panel.config file to sit things about, about there, but it depends on exactly which monitor is being used in the eventual situation. We have our knobs up on here for adjusting all the various bits and pieces. They are controlled from this uh, control unit down here. This is the 64 input board we use for all sorts of um, switch inputs, rotary encoder inputs, buttons, uh, whatever we want. There's another board here which is the enunciator driver uh, which comes up via the, the two ribbon cables to the back of the enunciator panel on here and brings up all the appropriate enunciators as, they, as it sees fit. Then we have the, an overhead panel here and um, we have all the various bits and pieces. A lot of these switches and uh, circuit breakers are dummies, they don't actually do very much, but ones that actually have to work, do work. So this is an actual aircraft circuit breaker, so, so these guys here, and all the switches do the ver various things down in here. We supply a service whereby we will actually wire the, the units for the, for the customers as well. This one, uh, our customer wanted it wired up, so we've done that. Uh, likewise on the back of the, um, the MIP as well, we do all the wiring. This is all the cabling all to it. Now it looks a mess on here because it's all rolled up into, into piles and things. Uh, when you put in your actual simulator it doesn't look, it doesn't look like that. This particular overhead panel we've actually fitted a pair of our um, intercom units as well for this particular customer. He has some special headset requirements and uh, so we've done that for him. Wired that all up as well. Right, we also make a, a complete avionics stack for the Bell 206. Uh, this one is for a customer who has a, uh, a GNS 530 to go into there and a little audio panel which will go into there. We've just made a little blanking panel for him at the moment. Um, down on the bottom here we have our um, other parts that tie in with our uh, existing Bell 206 systems and they're all wired up through to the other pieces you saw before. We have um, an actual working bright dim switch on here that operates on the enunciators and these of course do the rightful things um, on the simulator as well. We have on off switches, uh, there's the transponder on, um, we have the DME which has the three displays on it for um, distance, speed and minutes. We have an ADF. This particular uh, radio is set up for COM2 NAV2 and the top one is COM1 NAV1. These variations are anything that uh, you want them to be. We can put uh, COM1, COM2, NAV1, NAV2, any sort of combination at all. And they tune exactly as they should do in the rightful steps. So the COM radios go in 2570, and they are limited to their bottom and their top. But the, de the decimal sections of it will rotate around and around and around as per normal. Um, likewise with the, um, the nav, exactly the same thing. And they jump in the rightful places. ADF, the bottom knob tunes the left hand three digits and the top knob tunes the top, the right hand two digits. The uh, DME, uh, you can choose NAV2 and NAV1, where it's getting your data from. The aeroplane is not flying anywhere at the moment, sitting on the ground, so uh, there's no, no NAV aids in, in range of us. Uh, we'll show you later on how that works. And transponder, um, bottom knob operates the left hand two digits, and they only go 0 to 7. And the right hand, there's the right hand two digits. Okay, you can turn them off. When you turn them off, they don't actually they don't actually turn off totally. They turn off the display, so they look like they're off. 
in the background they've still maintained all their frequencies. So when you turn them back on, they will be correct again. Okay, now we'll show you how uh, some of it works. Um, if we turn the battery on, we'll see that we get the all the enunciators now light up. And turn on the avionics, and you'll see over on here that it shows up with the avionics. I'll just go back across here for a moment and show you the brightness. If we have a look at the how bright the um, enunciator is now, when we flick the brightness dim switch on the um, avionics console, there's the brightness, dim, bright, dim. And of course, we also have press the test up on there as well. Just to show you these, um, some, some of these circuit breakers are real ones. Um, you see here, if we just pull one of the um, fuel, fuel, fuel boost pump circuit breakers, the fuel pump enunciator comes up on here. Reset it, and off it goes again. Alright, we'll start the engine. So we lift the flap, turn on the fuel. And we don't have any controls hooked up to this, so it's just we'll just um, turn the um, starter on from here. There's some inserts coming up. And we have ignition on the engine. The engine failure light goes out. Oil pressure light goes out. And the turbine running. We've got low rotor RPM, of course, so we've still just got the engine just idling. And we have a generator failure. We haven't turned the generator on yet. If we were to turn the generator on here, generator fail goes away. Um, if we pull the generator field circuit breaker, we get our generator failure again. There's not really a lot more I can show you on that, um, but um, just as a matter of interest, if we um, just turn the fuel off, we'll see that we'll start getting some enunciators come up on there. Generators fail, the engine's out, and as the engine winds down, we've got oil pressure. And down she goes. Okay, just to give you another rundown with the aeroplane actually flying. Uh, just <clears throat> how the DME works. We have uh, we can choose NAV1 or NAV2, the source for the, of the DME data, and we have um, NAV1 tuned to one um, VOR, and NAV2 tuned to another one, uh, some distance apart. And we can look on here and we can see when we're tuned to this one, 41.8 nautical miles, 41 knots, and 60 minutes. Switch it to NAV2 the one this is tuned to, and we're 126 nautical miles away from that, and 80 knots, 93 minutes is going to take to get there, so we can tell from that, if we want to draw some circles, we can figure out roughly where we are, and we can flip backwards and forward to whatever we're doing. So, that's about it.